All right, guys, we're here at Lake Monroe and uh, just finished our tournament. And I was able to come in with five, um, but I believe two are probably going to be too short, so we're probably not going to go ahead and weigh those two in. Probably go and uh, release those two and just weigh in the three and see what that gets me. This is a tri county event out here for TSA, so they got all three counties out here fishing. So I don't know, maybe with some luck, I uh, finished pretty high with these three fish, but if not, uh, we'll get some videos of the weigh in, see what happens there, and talk to you guys later. Thanks. Alrighty guys, what's going on? I uh, just want to get here a little tournament review here. Um, a couple weeks ago we had a tournament, one of the TSA uh, high school fishing tournaments we had out on the Lake Monroe, which is on the St. John's River. And we launched out of one of the main ramps, can't remember the park name, right off 429. And great tournament, I mean, I have the worst past. You ask me any lake I don't like fishing. It is the St. John's River. We had the Florida State Championship out there two years ago, and my God, I caught one fish the two days. I mean, it was pitiful. So we haven't returned there since then, and we went to Lake Monroe, and the past two times I've fished there, squat, diddly squat, not one fish, not a bite. This time, uh, I had a little more general, let's say as much experience, but a little better idea of where I was going to go and fish. For the most part, I try to avoid the spawning areas and the spawning flats that pretty much have been hit. The only reason people ever fish that lake is the monster bags that can come off beds. And so I kind of focus just on the matted grass, fish that had spawned and push or fish that haven't spawned yet and are pushed up in the grass. That's what I was targeting mainly. Grass mats and a lot of just floating eelgrass and milfoil vegetation. They're pretty much mats. I could have gone up and flipped them and uh, the wind was, I mean, it was 25 miles per hour all day. I was fighting the wind all day and it was just brutal. But I was able to come across a couple bites. I on the boat interview you saw, I caught five fish throughout the day. The only issue there was I had two that were so small, and you're allowed one courtesy bump, which how the courtesy bump works in the weigh-in is one fish is allowed, say it's 11 and 3 quarters, it doesn't quite equal 12 inch with the Florida exemptions, then you can just take that out of your bag and you don't get a penalty, because if you do weigh in a fish under, then it's, you know, you get disqualified. So I had two that were really close, um, one that was about right at 12 but it was questionable you know and fish shrink you know when you catch a 12 and a quarter that fish might be 12 inches they get real nervous and tense up and fish actually do truly shrink in the live well I mean I wish I could shrink too if I was on a boat live well running 80 across the lake but anyways so I had two short ones I ended up you know making the smart decision to only courtesy bump one of them I threw one back in the lake went up to the weigh-in with four fish which in reality the courtesy bump was fine my fish went 12 and a quarter that was okay and I only had about a five pound bag, but it was enough for first place. And it was enough to take first place win. It was an all county event, so six divisions were out there fishing together. I didn't have the biggest bag of a whole tournament, but in my particular division, I did win. There's a little bit of hardware for you. And that was, oh, well, the first first weekend of this month. So, and now our next tournament, TSA is coming down to our wrap up. Uh, Right now, I'm sitting in third place, qualified for the state championship again. So we're going to be fishing out of Lake X, which is, we're not allowed to pre fish or nothing practice on. It's just not a lake that's been released. So we're fishing that April 20th and 21st, or it might be the 19th, 20th. Regardless, it's that, you know, like third general weekend of April. Our last tournament here is going to be on Stark Lake. Uh, a lot of experience on that lake. Hopefully I can keep up there and try to place one last tournament of the year before we head down to States and St. Cloud. And that'll be a fun turnout. So... What I was fishing here, when I get a review on the Lake Monroe tournament, is I caught all my all my fish, got all my bites on a swim bait. I got five bites all day, capitalized on every single one of them. Right here is the Evolve Dark Star swim bait. The thing is awesome. I mean, the greatest swim bait I think I have thrown, mainly because of the action. You know, most swim baits they're gonna go and they're just gonna give you a mild like, tail action, and all swim baits have that simple action. This one here is particular. It's got a not a slit, but a, almost like a thumping action at the tail that the whole tail moves, so that causes the body to wobble. And that's unique from any other swim bait that I've used on the market. I've thrown countless numbers of them. Any tackle video you've ever seen, I've got nine, ten different companies of swim baits. This one truly does wobble the best. I, th I love throwing swim baits weightless because I have the option of casting it out, letting it drop down, and getting a slow retrieve in, and I have the option of casting out and reeling on the top for surface bites. So. 
that's what I was fishing. It's black with silver flakes in there. And this thing is flipping awesome. So much action. Action. It's a bigger profile, so you're going to get bigger bites. I can't really say I did that on Lake Monroe, but it definitely caught the bites I needed, and it was enough for a first place. Rod and reel hardware I was using. This is a 7'6 extra heavy Co Matrix 2.5. These rods from Aris are so sick. Not only is this rod perfect for my, my heavy frog fishing and my light flipping and pitching, but also for swim baits and any kind of cover, even open water. I was taking a 5 odd super line EWG hook from Gongatsu, and uh, you're not going to roll this hook, it's not going to bend on you. Um, Every single fish I set the hook on that day flew out of the water back towards the boat. So you're just going to rig it up on a standard, just weightless rig. And it's got body slits on the bottom and top for easy rigging, as well as weedless retrieves. So you don't even have to tuck the hook in the plastic. It's ready just to be exposed. But the, the slits and the body help it from being weedless as well to give you less plastic you have to set the hook through most swim baits are very thick you set the hook up you're gonna fish out swim bait comes flying back to your face fish goes the other way these here my hookup ratio probably about 90 percent right now I'm probably i'm probably hooking seven out of every ten fish reason being i was catching a lot of small fish this whole freaking year i mean let's be serious here go back a couple videos there's not many fish over four pounds that i've been catching in fact TSA, I haven't caught a double-digit bag all year in TSA. I can go and fish a local tournament, win $300 on a 20-pound bag, but I go to TSA, and they're like four, five, six, seven-pound bags. So, um, now, what, what can I say there? So, the rod is awesome. Awesome action at the tip, and you're not going to completely pull a hook out. It's not a broomstick, but it's, it's heavy. It's heavy action. Light rod on the on the uh, upside, I should say, about to say downside. The reel I'm throwing is the Team Dial Zillion. That's 100 SHSA. So it's a 7 3 to 1 gear ratio. Pick up a lot of line quickly. Got the reel grips on there for the look kind of thing. And, uh, I mean, this thing's awesome. Uh, I've been running this forever. 65 pound spider thread micro braid is the line of choice for anything that I'm doing with cover now. So smooth, casting a mile. I mean, this was the setup. I love these rods, and this rod in particular. I'm gonna have to go with my second favorite. Really love the Comatrix 2.0s. Uh, you know, they're just my utility rod. I can use them for anything. This rod here, if you're going big, you're going home. This is the one to choose from. So the Zillion, the Comatrix 2.5, and the Evolve Swim Bait were my winning patterns for the Lake Monroe tournament. And uh, hopefully, I can get another winning pattern back to you guys on Stark Lake. And with all God's grace, maybe come up on a top five finish in state. So we'll see how that goes. And um, signing out here. I had a great tournament and. Going to get some tackle videos out for you, some rod videos, just so you can kind of stay updated, and if not, some fishing stuff. So I haven't been on the water to record in a while, so definitely got to get out there. So, again, any questions, let me know. I'm always here, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. And until next time, see you guys later.